Hey guys, this is Mikro here. I wanted to explain this graph I put together that basically shows that if health is not very effective in situations where you're being healed more and is more effective in situations where you're not being healed but still is not a very effective defensive perk in today's video. Uh, effective HP was traditionally what we used to measure health. Uh, turns out effective HP is not a very good thing to use anymore because it doesn't take into account situa situations where you're being healed. And if you're being healed, uh, health actually loses value because it requires more health for you to be healed by your allies and it doesn't mitigate damage that is going to be incoming to you consistently so if i'm taking like 10 sources of damage health will only apply to increase that max hp it won't actually mitigate those sources damage versus a more traditional perk of like shirking fort for example if you have more fortify every single instance of damage will be reduced by shirking fort both of these combinations make health not a lot less effective than we once thought it was, and I would overall say that health is actually not a very good armor perk anymore. I, I, like Calling it worse than slot feels a little bit harsh, but it's definitely not super effective when you look at uh, health from this perspective, but when you look at it from an effective HP perspective, health is decent overall, and I want to be going through that today. So the background for stuff that you kind of need to know before we go into all this depth is what effective HP is. Effective HP is when you have multiple factors that are contributing to a damage number or your HP. If that health number that you have uh, goes up, it, then your effective HP goes up. If your health number that you have based off other factors goes down, then your effective HP will go down. Uh, so basically, a bigger effective HP means you'll be more tanky. A smaller effective HP means you will be less tanky. This effective HP concept is useful from like a shorthand perspective for measuring things but it just doesn't take into account healing which is a, a problem in itself and that is going to be addressed by this sort of simulation so what i i did here that is a bit different uh from traditional kind of uh calculations is I actually made a thing where it's like hey we have a certain amount of hp we're getting healed for a certain amount we're taking a certain amount of damage how long do we live and that's like the simple question to ask like very high level there uh and when you actually go through that analysis it turns out that health is not super effective. In this case, I'm taking 3,000 damage, but I have uh, 1,000 health. That damage is raw damage, and uh, health turns out to be a little bit less effective than base damage resistance and uh, than ABS, which is also known as Old Fortify. That's one of those buckets that we showed up here. Uh, we have Empower, we have base damage, we have Fortify, we have Old Fortify or ABS. Those are four main buckets for damage mitigation within New World. From a defense perspective, we can control base damage, we can control fortify we can control uh, abs you can't really control weekend that's more of an offensive thing that you have to apply to people and people can like cleanse it and it doesn't work super consistently but it's a very effective source of damage mitigation as well so uh getting into this in a little bit more depth we needed to figure out like as a basis for how this stuff works uh, how much health is actually being healed versus damage being done and to address that i looked through every single instance of dropout wars within the last four months uh basically did the amount of damage that supple did or sorry the amount of health that we healed over the amount of damage that supple did and did the vice versa came up with numbers i uh, used that got the me median me median max min standard distribu standard distribution using that we can make a model uh, and we can basically make a bell curve for that and we can see that you're typically being healed for about half your damage within a uh, wars i used 39 competitive wars as the basis for this so it should be like fairly accurate uh, it's across multiple metas so that part just kind of taken into account as well but people are being healed for about half the damage it is noteworthy that you're typically not going to be dying if you're getting healed for more right you'll probably be dying when you're healing for less so that matters but this also doesn't take into account things like if you're healing from your pots that's not part of that statistical uh, calculation and that would shift the graph to the right you'd get the graph shifted also to the left uh, based off like you're more likely to die when you're not being healed as much so kind of noteworthy there to take that with a grain of salt uh and this is also the other noteworthy thing here is this is damage that's incoming right that's past that damage mitigation so if we're talking about raw damage your your raw damage is going to effectively need to be higher to get to these values uh so this is like if you took 5,000 damage and you got healed for 2.5k right but I can't tell how much damage you took it directly because there's a lot of factors that go into that. So I'm just basing it off of raw damage, which is going to shift uh, this graph a little bit more to the to the right. Uh, and it's going to make it so that you need to take more damage for the... Or no, it's going to shift this graph to the left because you're going to need to take more damage and get healed for, for less 
to be a little bit more statistic, just statistically correct. So this is like, even though this is like 0 0.5 here, it's probably closer to 0 0.4 is like a more realistic case. Uh, it's just, those are factors I can't take into account because there is no in-game logs and something you kind of have to think about uh, rather than actually have a statistical thing. Uh, before I continue further into this video, if you aren't sub, please do so. I think we can get to 6k if we really, really push it uh, before the end of the year. And that would make me very, very happy. So can please consider doing that if this is a very, very helpful video for you or not. Uh, and the other thing I need to talk about too is health is effectively uh, diminished because of this 100 con perk and because everyone runs jewelry. So even though uh, health is giving you 2.4% max HP per armor, if you're at a base of 17%, which is your jewelry plus this 100 con, uh, your real difference per each health perk is going to be the 17% plus 2.4, right? And then this is going to be divided uh, by that 17%. So the actual difference between each perk of health is less than 2.4%, and I don't think people really realize that. So health has a few factors going for it that are kind of bringing it down, so to speak, uh, within New World. So that being said, let's kind of get into the fun stuff here. Uh, this is a shortcut for all the armor mitigation for best in slot uh, gear, if you were to mathematically look at that. I have that sheet in my Discord if you need to see it, uh, but this is what it looks like. It basically just says, hey, if you're in heavy, you need to run all heavy to uh, get to best in to slot armor class. If you're medium, uh, you do heavy head, heavy chest, etc. Uh, there's also featherweight stuff in here. It's super, super helpful. Uh, pretty awesome util or tool, to be honest. And the other thing here to consider in terms of mitigation is all these other factors are like multiplicative, right? But armor is weird. It has this like weird logarithmic like uh, graph that is just kind of asymptotically uh, kind of hits some sort of point and doesn't really get as much value. So armor is good uh, up to a certain point and then it falls off and that kind of gets revealed within the calculation today as well. But let's hop back into this. So in terms of looking up stats, uh, we just look up the constitution from the in-game files. Uh, that's not super hard. It's adjusted by five, which is like it's zero con starts at you don't start at zero con, right? You start at five con and the, the sheet's a little bit skewed because of that, which is why I have to put it in as minus five here. So that, that just looks up your actual health uh, and we run our sim off of that. So in terms of what I did for this sim, that's kind of interesting. You can't just punch in numbers and say, hey, uh, I have 25% ABS. I'm going to be resisting 25% of all incoming damage. It's not how that works. Uh, you will be realistically mitigating about a third of incoming damage sources with ABS or Old Fortify. So that would usually, right now in a war meta, that would be Fire. Uh, Arcane uh, is pretty common on point. A uh, Thrust uh, and Slash are the most common sources of damage. Strike is also somewhat common. Uh, and of these, like you typically, in any particular role, are taking between like three... Uh, well, not really even three. It's like between two to four of these damage types. And the more of these damage types that you take, the less effective something like having slash conditioning would be. If you're not taking slash and you're said like in a sniper duel, you would be taking a thrust and you'd be taking some sort of elemental damage. That wouldn't be as effective there. So that loses value, which is that's why I have this one third here, because I think one third is like kind of smack in the middle. Uh, pretty easy to use there. Uh, we have our base damage formula here. This also has a one third in it because you have the enchanted or like you have the basically the auto attacks which is is mitigating but it doesn't work versus abilities both ranged and physical uh, it doesn't work versus heart runes uh, so effectively it's working versus one third of the incoming damage types which is why that's there and then fortify i think it's pretty realistic to say you'll have like 60 percent off time with fortify it's not up all the time but it's up a pretty significant amount which is where we end up with this graph here uh, so this is looking at this from a heavy perspective because heavy is the most common armor type right now And I think it's a good spot to kind of start off You can see that old fortify is our best in slot perk after that It's shirking fort and then after that it's some sort of base damage reduction So it seems like overall uh, you need to but the, the noteworthy thing here is all these are kind of debatable, right? But then look at health like health is like nowhere near as effective but I'm gonna compare these side by side health is like half as effective in spots where you're being healed if you look at a spot where you're say you're you're dying uh, you're not being healed but you pop your pots so like maybe a thousand uh because you, you have your pots being popped here health is like marginally effective like you don't think you'd even see it here because it's just like kind of falling off if you look at our, our spot here where everything is scaled uh so that you can everything is normalized here so based off your uh, an effect where you don't have any bonus a uh, health is getting some value like it's getting more value than a base damage perk but it's not getting more value than tricking fort it's not getting more value than abs 
not getting more value than base damage. The other problem with Shirking Ford is this can get stripped by Nullifying Oblivion, which could bring this a little bit lower. So like health is good in those spots where you're taking a large amount of burst and you're not being healed very often, but in spots where you are actually being healed for a significant amount of HP, like say you're getting healed for 3,000 HP per 10, per that 10,000 raw damage that is incoming, then health is going to fall down and be like the worst perk, right? So basically it just comes down to how often are your perks are procking. So for something like Frigid Dawn, it, you just have to ask yourself how often are those perks procking individually. Uh, I think sh Elemental Aversion is really slept on, especially on point, because Elemental Aversion, like I simmed it here with a, a factor that is going to be reducing that uh, damage, uh, or it, I simmed it with a factor that an attacker would have 60% base damage, because that's just common at this point. Uh, because everyone just kind of has a decent amount of base damage and that is reducing the effectiveness of ABS, right? Or sorry, not of ABS, of base damage. But if you're in a spot where you're taking damage to like a heart rune, like detonate, that is not going to have any scaling from that, uh, that base damage perspective because the heart rune specifically calls out base damage and is like, Hey, I uh, don't use this for my damage. Uh, that, like, that says that like within new world files. And because of that, uh, damage for that base damage will be most more closely aligned with ABS. So I think elemental aversion is like really, really solid in those situations, like we're on point and is on par with fortify basically, or maybe even better than fortify because it will have 100% uptime. So then we get to the idea of like this uh, frigid dawn gear, right? Do you go for elemental aversion and enchanted ward? Is this best in slot? I think it is arguably best in slot. The only thing that would be better than this would be if you're like on point if you do elemental aversion and you do conditioning like i think that would be slightly better uh and then if you're off a point i think it is best in slot to go elemental aversion and when the enchanted ward so it's like generally very very good that last perk you don't even have to put health on there to be honest like you're not going to be taking a ton of burst in those rules like you're not going to get 100 owed usually you're in a spot where you're being pocketed in those rules and then those that specific spot Health is not going to get as much value as some sort of like shirking for conditioning like effect. So you effectively can go for elemental aversion, enchanted ward, a uh, conditioning with this new frigid dawn gear and basically be invincible, uh, which is a little crazy. Uh, and that overall, I think is going to be the best source of damage mitigation for most roles within new world. Again, if you're on point, you might want to go for like sort of the depths gear or the uh, gear from the new, uh, the I think it's the primal gear from the new expedition that has an enchanted or elemental aversion and shirking for it. The problem is this last perk is RNG and it's not named. It's not upgradable, which is a pain. So you can acquire best in slot gear from that, but it's just like a little bit harder. Uh, and that would be more damage mitigation for on point than any other metric. So we're kind of ended up in a spot where uh, farming PVE sets is just best in slot for PVP, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, if you want to do like kind of a non farmy route, uh, you can go elemental aversion and uh, go for conditioning for most roles and i think that's good or go for enchanted war go for conditioning go for shirking four go for conditioning the point is here is you probably don't want to go for health even in spots where health is like getting value so like at these lower instances for example if you look at health versus other perks it's like oh uh or where, where even is health on here it's blue but it's covered up by something because everything is so close together it's kind of annoying uh, okay, it is on top. It just fell off at a certain point. Uh, but if you look at a spot here where, say, you're getting healed for, I don't know, like 500 uh, HP. Okay, health just disappeared. There we go. We can see health here. It, go it just, like, perfectly aligns with ABS, which is quite annoying. Uh, but say we're being, we have health on here, and health is supposed to be teching for these high burst situations, right? You're only going to be, like, living, like, 1 or 2% longer than one of these other gear pieces. And it's not that's not significant in a spot where you're taking, like, tons and tons of damage like if i'm living for 1.05 seconds versus 1.1 second like who cares like you know like just press shift you're gonna be dead anyway so i i really don't think health is that good for pvp in general and these spots where this time to kill kind of increases you can see that health just gets more and more value it makes sense to, to run health at a certain point uh like if you're taking tons and tons of burst but i i don't think it's worth it in most situations and instead you should probably focus on going for conditioning and that's just like a general best in slot uh, item perk for pieces i have this uh kind of workflow here i don't know what you want to call it this analysis on, on github if you guys want to check it out uh it's on there so anyone can kind of explore with it make improvements if you see something i did stupid but i'm pretty sure i didn't do anything too stupid because i spent like a day or two like kind of checking my work for this 
Uh, but yeah. Uh, and the other thing to leave you guys with too, if you haven't seen the damage formula, this is what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to be trying to update this to include the new, or the, sorry, the new, but the actual damage formula that exists within New World and we could be running this for Sims using actual in-game builds. Hopefully, we could be pulling that data from New World Buddy. Uh, if you look at the Discord that we have here uh, within the actual builds, a lot of people have been dropping these kind of cool uh, builds from New World Buddy that spits out something that looks like this, just to grab one as an example. And you could use optimal character recognition to basically pull the damage that's coming out, right? And then I could pull stats like Empower, uh, the, the Fortify, etc. And I can determine how tanky your build is, how much damage your, your build is going to be doing with this, and kind of all that sorts of stuff. So uh, overall, uh, definitely more work to do with this kind of setup. But at least for now, we can determine that health is not actually best in slot. And from there, uh, we, we can do more analysis. And with that being said, enjoy your guys' holidays, and I'll see you in the next one.